Hello, welcome to Pandora's Box. Today I'll be doing the set review for Flesh and Blood Monarch. Monarch is the fourth Flesh and Blood expansion. It is the IP of Legend Story Studios. This set is in English. The booster boxes comes in sizes of 24 packs and each pack contains 15 cards. The total set size is 306 cards, not including the foils. This set was released in June 2021 and this is made in the USA. Today's review will be graded based on my patented Virgin system. The V in Virgin stands for Vision. Monarch is the fourth expansion set for Flesh and Blood. This is a full expansion set which includes new characters and new mechanics. This set has a very heavy light versus dark theme. There are also references to Christianity. The light is represented by angels and order and goodness in general, while the dark is represented by demons and chaos and suffering. This trope is of course very cliché. We have all seen this a million times, but Legend Story Studios has done a good job with the execution. Imagination-wise, good job on Legend Story Studios for putting rifles on both sides. There is also a willingness for more blood and gore. There is an overarching background story which can be read off the Flesh and Blood website. The law touches on the origin stories of new characters introduced in this expansion and the art itself is probably the best part of this expansion. I'm much more invested into this franchise because of the interwoven background stories. This set is a way to capitalize on the explosive initial success of Flesh and Blood. There is a focus on both gameplay and world building. This is a very big set at 306 cards. That's not including possible foil variants, which will double the number. However, there are a ton of cards right, with the same artwork, which makes the set feel like it is like one third of the original actual size. The next criteria is I for illustration. In terms of the artwork, I feel that this is one of the best sets of Flesh and Blood so far. Much effort has been put into every single card, including the commons. This was not the case with the first expansion, Welcome to Rough, where a small handful of common cards had really shitty artwork. The colors and medium here mirror magic. The art style is also very similar, but too bad the foils are very dull and I can miss some of them if I wasn't careful. The focus on light and dark here means the landscape is also contrasted as though we are looking at heaven and hell. The dark is especially hellish with the liberal use of blood and torture. The light and dark might be done to death, but this is what makes this set coherent and we know exactly what to expect. Next is R for Realization. The cut stock here is average. I mean, foil curling is still present and this feels exactly like Magic and Pokemon because but I assume that they are from the same printers and the quality issues that haunt those franchises right are all present here. At first, I was bemoaning that there was no flavor text in the cards, but it turns out that there are actually flavor text right in a small number of cards. This is a small but very positive step as I do feel more immersed right in the world building of this franchise. A lot of TCGs like Pokemon have been at the top for a prolonged period of time and sometimes it can feel like they are going through the motions with some of their new products just to maintain their lead on the rest of the industry. Monarch is the overzealous underdog who knows it has a chance and it is fighting to move up. The effort is also evident in the care that Legend Story Studio takes to craft its website to give its customer base as much information as possible. This is in stark contrast to many other Japanese TCGs where the parent companies just do not care. Prices for the first edition boxes have really high MSRP, but the unlimited boxes are really cheap and readily available. This is the fourth set of Flesh and Blood, but the unlimited print run for this set actually comes before the third set, which is Crucible of War. Legend Story Studios has maintained that they had always planned for first edition print runs right, to cater to the collecting community. The fact that the unlimited print run for the fourth set came out before the unlimited print run for the third set right, makes me think that this might not be the actual case. Legend Story Studios had not foreseen the explosive popularity and growth of Flesh and Blood and scrambled to print more Welcome to Raft and Arcane Rising boxes to meet demand. They lucked out on the perfect situation 
to slightly alter the second print run to make the first print run, which was already out of print, super valuable among collectors. Everything just fell right into place for Legend Story Studios, contributing even more to its explosive growth. G is for Gamble or Gacha. So with every set, every expansion, there is a favored card here, the Great Library of Solana, which is like in one out of every 40 boxes. I am not entirely sure of the pool rate and I'm too lazy to Google it. But that card, the unlimited version at least, right, is like $300 plus. The rest of the cards are sitting way below $100 and this does seem a little bit like the Charizard situation in Pokemon. Other than the Fabled and Legendaries, I'm getting like 6 to 8 Majestics per box. They do not have value but I still feel happy pulling them. Short term value has crashed for both the first edition and the unlimited edition. The overall market in the TCG community is also facing a huge correction at this point in time. Even though there is no financial satisfaction from opening the boxes, I am super blown away by the extent of the blood and gore. Waifus in compromised and helpless situations always gets my blood pumping somewhere. The excitement in seeing compromised waifus are tempered, however, by seeing the same cards over and over and over again. The second eye in Virgin stands for innovation. Flesh and Blood at this moment is very focused on gameplay first. The vast majority of people who purchase Flesh and Blood play the game, thus the focus on new characters and game mechanics. Only a small percentage of losers like me right, buy Flesh and Blood to collect. Product wise, everything is good except the pool rate and I think the card quality. There are a couple of structured decks, I think there's 4 in total, available for casuals to quickly experience and get into this game. Even though the focus is on the gameplay, the law makes me invested in the new characters like Prism and Levias. And as a new game, it should absolutely continue with the world building like this. The last criteria is N for novelty. The allure of first edition boxes have dissipated. This set might mark the end of Flesh and Blood's explosive growth. Monarch is focused on expansion and world building instead of looking back and I can find no nostalgia here. This set might be iconic for showing people that the idea of the first edition limited print run boxes might not work and is not the solution to long term collectability. Everything goes up long term as long as the game does not go defunct. Originality is extremely high here with the improvement in gameplay and extensive world building. After analyzing this set according to my patented virgin criteria, it is time to review my final grade for Flesh and Blood Monarch. Before I do that, please remember to like and subscribe to Pandora's Box to continue to listen to me review obscure cardboard products. I post new videos daily, so please remember to check back for more content like this. I am going to give Flesh and Blood Monarch 4 stars. This is the highest I have given to any Flesh and Blood product. I feel that with the improvements, Flesh and Blood might be dipping in toes into the realm of magic and Pokemon. The artwork and gameplay, two of the most fundamentally important aspects of a trading card game, has been done very well here. The one big drawback is the nature of cards that you can pitch for energy. Monarch feels like one third of the set of the 300 card that it actually is. Legend Story Studios, please just change up the artwork a bit on those cards. I do not ask for completely new artwork, just a little bit of modifications to differentiate them for flavor. If that can be done, I think I can firmly say that Legend Story Studios will have the product quality to compete with Magic and Pokemon. Monarch is one of the best TCG products outside of Magic and Pokemon that I have seen in a while and this is why I give Monarch 4 stars. This is my review for Monarch from Flesh and Blood. If you have not heard of Flesh and Blood before, please do give it a try. I am certain you will be pleasantly surprised. Unless you don't like helpless waifus in compromised situations. In this case, we can never be friends. If you like what you see, please subscribe to my channel for more box openings, set reviews, top 10s and content curated for nerds in general. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye!